All right, good morning, iLive listeners and all those looking at my uh, YouTube channel. We're here with Robin Gray, a well-established bodybuilder. Uh, she's got a beautiful family. Uh, she's in the ambulance, and she's been training for many, many years. And I really reached out to her to uh, have a conversation and enlighten you guys about the bodybuilding journey and her whole journey with that. So, uh, Robin, how you doing? I'm great. How about yourself? Good, good. So, uh, Robin, tell me how this all started for you as far as the fat, the, the passion for fitness. Oh, wow. Um, I've been involved in the fitness. I guess my first show I did uh, about 22, 23 years ago. Okay. Originally, I did one. Um, uh, I had was training at the time and had uh, fallen in love with training. And I had met somebody uh, who's actually very big in the bodybuilding industry. And uh -huh. uh, we were in our 30s at the time. And I thought, oh, well, we'll try it. Um, and I was having a, a lot of problems with anxiety. Yes. And I thought, well, this will help me get over this. So I did my first show about 23 years ago. And then uh, I went a span without uh, doing anything. I still kept up with my training. And then uh, unfortunately went through, or fortunately, I guess, depending on how you look at it, went through a separation. Oh, and in order for me to get through that, I threw myself into the bodybuilding even more. Yeah. Um, and had decided then that uh, it was definitely a passion and uh, had decided to step on stage. Now, were you doing this, like, before you got into bodybuilding, what were you doing for fitness? Were you doing anything for fitness? Um, I had a home gym, mm -hmm. and um, I would just train at the nearest gym that I had uh, at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, not really, as I say, I kind of watched this lady from afar. And at the watched, gym? Yeah, and okay. uh, watched what she was doing and, and was very intrigued by her. Um, what was the gym? What was your first gym? Um, oh, wow. My first gym, uh, I guess was my, I had a home gym and then you went and bought weights your I, first time with uh, training. You bought weights. I did. Okay. I brought, yeah. I brought a, uh, actually I had a pre-core home gym that was, uh, bought for me and was uh, brought up from the States. And that's where I originally started. And that had like, I guess the chest press, what, what kind of setup did it have? I had a leg press I had uh, uh, you could do hack squats on that uh -huh. uh, it was set up for in, pretty much anything that you could do at a gym and then I had my own treadmill um, what uh, was your what was your regiment at that time um I would train once a day uh definitely for sure um uh -huh. I was more at that point, I uh, was working for a private ambulance service. So I had a little more flexibility. I was straight days. I had a little more flexibility uh, where I could train every day. Uh -huh. um, so it, uh, yeah. And then it just kind of progressed from there. Yeah. How did it progress for you? Like, as far as your knowledge of different movement, how did you move forward with your training? Um, I actually read uh, a lot of magazines which one? Uh, hers. Uh -huh. um, oh, it was hers was probably my biggest one that, uh, that I loved. And I just at then we didn't have computers when uh -huh. I originally started. And then uh, I just read a lot of magazines and took a lot from that. And I'm not shy about approaching um, people in the gym or asking, uh, you know, what they're doing and show show me what what it's working. And um, I have a I, I have a tendency to surround myself with with men at the gym yeah i like the way they train they train heavy they train hard mm -hmm. um, they have that discipline so um i i'm not shy about approaching um a man at the gym and asking them so when you started networking in the gym and stuff what kinds of things were you starting to learn differently from what you were doing already wow um i know you got it's a ways to remember your mindset at the time it, it is um because things ch things change so much over the years mm -hmm. um especially going from you know reading everything out of magazines and right. going to the gym and then once computers came in and and um you know i mean it's progressed so much especially when you're involved with social media too mm -hmm. and, and uh 
um, your your outlook on training changes mm -hmm. as well too. So um, yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting. So you're so you as you you know you network in the gym, you talk to these guys. What, were they bodybuilders themselves? Is like how you kind of came down that path, or yeah? Well, originally when I started um, years ago, it was just basically myself with my head in the magazines and just mm -hmm. you know trying to um, figure things out. And then as I progressed and going to the gyms and and surrounding myself more with the bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. um, then it definitely changed. I started to train heavier and, and, um, um, and, and then the more so in the last 13, 14 years, when I really put myself into the show, started mm -hmm. to do shows. And, um, what made you decide to go to your first show? Like, how did it start I'm trying to, trying to figure out this path exactly here? So, you, you know, you started networking, I'm sure with some big guys, probably some of them were competing and now you're lifting heavy, you're pretty much shadowing their workouts. So I'm sure you're seeing some size now, oh, and yes. then, right? You're getting some good size. And, and then where did it go from there? What made you say, you know what, I think uh, who influenced you? Where did it, how did you now decide, you know what, I'm going to make that? Because that's a huge step. Now we're talking it, about, right? It is a huge step. Well, mm -hmm. as I say, this, this lady um, who is a good friend of mine, who I idolized and who had been doing shows for a while. Um, her name is uh, Judy Doughty. Um, mm -hmm. She, I remember approaching her and talking to her and asking her about doing this. And I'm thinking I'm too old. I'm in my thirties. I can't do this. Yeah. And um, she kind of guided me onto that stage. And, and uh, I've honestly have, I've always idolized her since then. And um then I got a coach. Uh -huh. um, uh, this would be back about 14 years ago now I'm, during my separation. And I got myself a bodybuilding coach, a female uh -huh. bodybuilding coach. And, and uh, it just, it went from there. It's just, and she was amazing. Uh, I started out with the IDFA, um, which is the natural um, show. And I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I did shows to Mon in Montreal and traveled. Yeah. Um, always included my children in the process. And yeah, I was going to get to how you um, got the family involved and the whole yeah. buy-in. But I did, wanna, I did want to see, like, okay, so once you got introduced to your trainer, what was the adjustments? What was now the new path from where you were in your current training? Um, well, now came the diet. <laughs> she threw, she gave you the diet right away. She right? gave me the diet and she gave me the workouts and uh, she actually went to the same gym I did at the time, uh, which mm -hmm. was the good life Yeah. Uh, in Peterborough. And um, so I trained with her a few times. It was basically trying to get the diet down. Uh, what kind of diet do they give you right away? And what, well, particularly for you, what diet did you have to adjust to and, and how hard was it? adjusting to it it was difficult ad mm -hmm. adjusting to it when you're not when you're not used to it uh -huh. um and trying to get your times down um and trying to make sure that you get enough meals in in a day because uh -huh. um, you're eating about every you know three hours um and making sure depending on what your career is too or your job is having to right. carry your food with you yeah, those are big adjustments. Now you're in the ambulance. You're in the ambulance. I am. I am. So how did how did you make that adjustment initially going to work? So I'm I'm imagining you're you're preparing what four meals for work? Um, at least four meals. Yes. Yes. So you're preparing five, four to six meals. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your job is not easy as far as you know when when you're uh, in a situation. I I don't think you can go get a meal. How did you? How did you make the adjustment? How did you do all that? Um, I, I become a very, it, it made me into a very routine person, uh -huh. um, which I, I didn't realize at the time I was not. Uh -huh. um, and it, it, it makes you into a routine person. And um, like you have very set schedules that you do do things in order to keep that schedule going and keep you on track. Uh -huh. um, you have to do those sort of things. 
You know what I mean? Like you meal prep on Wednesdays and Sundays, you make your meals up prior to, you're always carrying your meals with you. Uh Um, And I still mean, I've been doing that for 14 years. It's a way of life for you right now. It is absolutely. Yes. What kinds of foods were you eating and what kinds of foods were you preparing? Um, I was lucky with my first coach. She was a chef Mm -hmm. uh, uh, by trade as well. So some of the stuff that she came up was very unique. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I actually do still use some of her recipes. Um, For listeners listeners that don't know anything about the bodybuilding world. And you know what? A lot of people are very curious about the bodybuilding world as far as, you know, how do you guys get your bodies there? Um, I always hear that question. What do they eat daily? Uh, what do you guys eat daily? Um, my main uh, substance for my main foods for the day is rice, uh-huh. uh, chicken, uh, salmon. And that's chicken breast, right? Uh, chicken breast, yes. Um, salmon. Um, you can eat white fish. Um, uh-huh as well depending on depending on what you're training that day Uh um, can vary and uh, mainly oatmeal cream of rice Um, my I happen to have a little bit of berries right now at this point Uh but it's um, you really have to have a lot of variety or try and have a lot of variety you have to change it up regularly because your foods are the same pretty much same every day man yeah and like um how do you deal with that like eating the same foods what kind of varieties would you have for say i don't know meats because i mean it seems pretty limited with the fish and the chicken breast right it does um so i mean you can change you can change your chicken up by barbecuing it okay. um you can fry it um there's just you know i mean you can do uh different crock pot you know what I mean? You can put it in broths. Uh-huh. Just to, it's just changing, trying to change up the flavoring. Yeah. Um, because you you can't constantly eat the same things all the time. Because usually when you do a prep, your prep is is um, uh, on the average is can be sixteen to twenty weeks of eating right. generally the same foods, right? So and your off season, you're pretty much doing the same things except your your food intake is higher. Right. Now you said that your, your uh, meals would change based on what you're working on, say for like a leg day for you uh, at that time, I guess, what would you prepare for a leg day, I guess, or a heavy day? Heavy uh, day? For, um, so for, for a leg day, I would have like, let's say 65 grams of oatmeal, 75 grams of berries, uh, one cup of egg whites, and that would be my first meal. And then uh, second meal uh, would be like 180 grams of rice, uh, four ounces of beef. Um, or now you guys weigh rice. everything out, right? We do. Absolutely. And is it weighed out in comparison to your weight? Yes. Or your program? Yeah. Um, or both? No, it's to your weight, depending on if you're in prep or in your off season. Uh-huh. So I'm just, uh, I just started a prep. I'm going to do a bit of a mini prep. Uh I've been in off season for two years Uh um, and uh, I've been working hard to put a lot of muscle on. So I'd like to see now after two years, what's underneath all of these layers (laughs) Um, and just kind of see what I need to uh, change or where I need to grow over the next year. I was really hoping to step on stage this year, but um it's not gonna happen so and, and i'm okay with that yeah um, gives me i i it gives me another year of growing uh-huh. and before i mean i it, this is my pro debut so when i step onto that stage uh for the first time as a pro yeah i really like to make that impact oh and you so will I, i'm here you know what i mean i've i've worked hard for this and i'm here so i want to really um come out looking my best so i'm okay with having another year Yes. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, my coach has been fantastic. So, um, so Robin, when you got into the bodybuilding, you said that it really helped with your mental health. It really helped, uh, you know, just relieving some of the stress from personal circumstances. Oh, yeah. Uh, kind of talk about how that all worked out as far as you diving into bodybuilding and it really helping you out in your life. Um, well, as I say, I went through, I love training. Yeah. I, I just love it, everything about it. It uh, um, 
it, it, it can help with your moods. It can, you know what I mean? It, you can focus at the time, you can block out that world. You can, um, there's so many good things about training. Um, for me at the time, 14 years ago, as I say, I came out of a really bad separation. Mm -hmm. Um, and the only way that I could get through that was to throw myself into the gym, uh, more. Mm -hmm. And it, it, uh, has been a blessing ever since then. It literally saved my life. Um, so it's, for me, it's about, like I said, the mental health, I can go in there, I can throw some weights around, I can, I can block the world out. And sometimes I need that with my job mm -hmm. is, um, and just my life. I mean, I have three children, eight grandchildren. I, I need that focus sometimes other than them, you know, even if it's just for an hour. How did you do it with the children as far as, you know, your time management and all that goes with just being a mom? How did, how did, uh, how'd you do it? I, um, I've been very lucky. Um, my children have been fantastic, especially mm -hmm. my girls. Mm -hmm. um, I include them in it. Yeah. So if they're included in it, they're more likely to, you know what I mean? Go mom, go mom. And, and we're behind you. And, and when I first started out, um, they went to every show. When I went to Montreal, they came with me. Um, I included them, especially in the last week before show. Mm -hmm. That's when you definitely include your family, because especially for women, that's when you get your hair done, your nails done, right. and your new bikini. And, yep. and I got my children, my girls involved in that. You know what I mean? I let them help design my, my bikinis. And if I went and got my hair done, they got their hair done. And that's great. They picked out my nails and that kind of stuff. And, and that I didn't want them discouraged from, from this. I don't, mm -hmm. I mean, it can be a very selfish sport. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want them thinking that way. I wanted them to think that this was a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm lucky because both my girls, uh, my youngest competes uh, as well. And my older daughter is now involved in uh, the bodybuilding as well. She loves wow. the training part of it too. Yeah. So, and my, um, now my 19 year, soon to be 19 year old granddaughter is, uh, likes to train as well. So maybe one day. That's I'll great. So the audience. You, yeah. You've got a legacy for your family. You've yes. created culture. Do yes. you find some bodybuilders isolate their families or do the opposite of what you said that you've done for your family? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, over the years, you often hear that, um, you'll hear people say, my family's not behind me. Um, I have one girlfriend in particular, a uh, very good friend of mine. I think her daughter, I think her daughters have been to one show uh -huh. and she's done many, many shows. Um, her family just is not involved. What um, are some of the biggest challenges, Robin, for people, um, introducing bodybuilding into their family life. I know the meals is already going to be number one on the list, but talk about that, but talk about all the other little things people don't talk about that creates a challenge for people in the bodybuilding industry. Um, I mean, as you say, it can be a very selfish sport or seems like a very selfish sport. Um, we spend many hours at the gym, you know, and, um, can you talk about how many hours you guys like? I know many bodybuilders do the hour in the morning for cardio. Uh, talk about that that struct the daily structure. Of um, well, day. I mean, it, it's a little more lax when you're in your off season, but when you're in prep, um, mm -hmm. which I say can be anywhere from sixteen to twenty weeks. Um, like you said, you're usually doing morning cardio. The afternoon, you're going back and you're doing your weights. Um, there's often times in there that you're having to do posing sessions. You're going to meet with your, your posing coaches, mm -hmm. um, which can be up to a couple hours as well. I mean, depending sometimes twice a week. So, and then, um, then you're going to be fitted for your bikinis or your, your bodybuilding suits for the guys. Um, it's, it, it's a lot of time involved in it. And then when you get into women's bodybuilding and women's physique, we have routines that we have to do as well. 
Right. Um, so you have choreographers involved and, and uh, time working on that. Um, so oh, it, I, that's that I want to get to the posing. Um, quick question with the training, how many muscle groups do you guys work on per day? Like, cause I know, or do you work the whole body every day? What is, what is the structure? Um, myself and I know most people, I usually do, um, legs. I do two leg sessions a week. So I split up my quads one okay. day and my hamstrings another day. Uh -huh. Um, for instance, I did shoulders and triceps this morning. Okay. Um, I do back and biceps another day. I'll work chest in there. Mm -hmm. um, so for the most part, usually I'll do one big muscle group and then one smaller. Um, I don't know how these people can do big two, two big <laughs> muscle groups in a day. I would be exhausted. To, so, to gain the kind of size you guys are getting, yeah. how many uh, sets per muscle group does one need to look at to make any sort of gain? Um, I do at least four sets. I like to do what I call a one warm up set. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, cause my, my weights are usually a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just kind of letting my body know what's coming for my first set. And then, uh, and then I go from there and my, my three sets are a lot heavier after that. So yeah. Yeah. at least four, depending quads, I have a tendency to get a little carried away. Um, right. so I do definitely more than four sets, but <laughs> so everyone needs a coach, right? Robin, like, um, yeah, you need that second set of eyes. If <laughs> you have, I have uh, a friend who, um, does a lot of research. Uh -huh. He, uh, has actually managed to bring himself in very well on his own. Uh -huh. Um, he knows his diet well, but he has, he, he has, he'll, he'll come to me or he'll go to, you know, other friends, but you ne always need that, those second set of eyes because we look at ourselves differently than somebody else does. Mm -hmm. um, so you need somebody who's honest with you and you need to be able to take criticism very well. And, what kind of uh, critiquing do you get? What's a typical conversation with uh, someone in their coach, uh, you know, in different periods of the, uh, the process, maybe at the beginning and, near the end what kind of things what kind of conversations do you guys have um depending depending on i mean for the most part at the beginning of a prep it's usually okay well how many you know how much weight do you think you need to lose mm -hmm. or roughly what you're looking at um you know what i mean like for some people like women especially we have a tendency to carry a lot more water okay uh, and um go and then once you, as your prep progresses from there you know what I mean? You're pretty tough on yourself yeah. and you expect your coaches to be pretty tough on you too. Mm -hmm. um, and you want honesty. Uh, if something is not looking right, then you need to be told that, okay, we, we need to change this up. Something's not working. Okay. You know what I mean? What are you not doing? You know what I mean? So um, it, it can be hard sometimes. I guess the focus is not just body fat percentage, but muscle size and it this kind of symmetry you're kind of producing, right? Yeah, exactly. It is. It's um, yeah. Cause you want that overall symmetry. Um, mm -hmm. That's what they're looking for when you hit that stage. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and our bikinis are specially made um, for us and they have um, especially for figure and physique, we have um, special bikinis where they show that symmetry. They have the, uh, uh, the pieces, the crossovers that give that look for symmetry. So in layman's terms, and I know you're a judge, what are judges looking for, I guess, for, for a winner? Um, what's the criteria to someone that doesn't know anything about bodybuilding? <laughs> um, well, there again, you're looking for symmetry. You're mm -hmm. looking for, um, you know, I mean, are both sides equal you know what uh -huh. I mean because um, we always have one side that's not uh, equal to the other side um, you're looking for overall fun fullness uh -huh. um, how you know what I mean your leanness is going to play a big part you have to be able to show that muscle properly um, it's uh, you know what I mean it's it's such a science when it comes down to it is is and that's where your coach comes in is 
being able to pull that water off. Um, <laughs> yeah. We carried that water between the uh, muscle uh -huh. um, and, and the skin, and you need to be able to pull that water off, right? So that you, the judges can see that muscle and what you've worked so hard for. So how do you get it off? How, what's the uh, trick? Um, there's a, well, there's a few tricks. I mean, it's, uh, um, one thing I've found over the years, it's uh, come from my, my coaches actually, is uh, I find vitamin C works very well, which I honestly didn't know. Vitamin uh, C. Vitamin C is a uh, great way of pulling water off. It works very well. If you know how to use it properly, mm -hmm. um, it works amazing. Now, Robin, there's foods with vitamin C. You got mangoes, you got, you know, lemons and stuff. Do bodybuilders believe in getting the nutrients from food or would you rather, you know, resort to supplements, vitamins, things like that? What's your. Um, I'm a big one. I do take vitamins. Mm -hmm. um, I more take them because of my age mm -hmm. um, and I need that little bit of extra, but I'm a big one in believing in your foods. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes, you can have supplements, absolutely, uh, like your glutamine and uh, stuff that you can't get through, um, like your your vitamins. Mm -hmm. uh, supplements are very important, like your BCAs. But overall, I'm a big believer in getting what you need from your foods. Right. Yeah. Now, as far as supplements and minerals go, um, vitamins go, what would you recommend for someone getting started in uh, bodybuilding? Um, What's the essentials? You're definitely, uh, I always like to recommend uh, your glutamine for sure, um, your BCAs. To me, those are the two most important things that you can have. Uh, mm -hmm. Vitamins, definitely your vitamin C. Um, zinc, magnesium uh, are your three most important ones. Um, vitamin D as well. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, vitamin D is yeah. very important, especially to your bones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the protein supplements? Um, yeah, I mean, myself, I do take casein. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy that. And it's kind of something that's different. Uh, it's time released. So it's, uh, uh, it's a great supplement, uh, especially if you're looking for something before bed. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm a big believer uh, that you should have something just before going to bed. You need to, if especially if you are a big bodybuilder, you have a lot of muscle, you need to feed that muscle while mm -hmm. you're sleeping. Um, I've heard horror stories about these bodybuilders getting up through the night, they're eating. Um, how do they, so the best way to uh, eliminate that is uh, how again? Is it definitely eating before, just before eating, you go to bed. Just yeah. before you go to bed? Yeah. And that's where your, your casein, like your protein powders, your casein powders come in handy. You can make a nice pudding Yeah. Um, out of that. Um, you can get like uh, sugar-free chocolate syrups or butterscotch syrups. You can put on that, add a little yeah. bit of almond butter. Mm. It's a great snack before going to bed and it will help because it's, the casein is time-released. So it's feeding your body while you're sleeping. And, and that's very important. Robin, it seems like you got all the alternatives down. Well, I'm-, I'm The food I'm, alternatives. You got all the alternatives <laughs> down. It took <laughs> a long time to, to learn this stuff. And I still have a lot to learn. Now with the posing, tell me how you got introduced to the posing. And um, what's, the, what's the journey of someone trying to learn to pose? What are the, some of the uh, challenges and things like that? Oh, posing is not easy, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it certainly looks easy and I yeah. will never forget it. Um, I'm thinking, oh, that's nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the same as uh, I'll never, uh, I'll never take skipping for granted either. It's. Uh, oh, you used to skip too. I, I did. It was a part of my uh, uh, training. Uh, I guess cardio. For years ago, yes. And I always thought, oh, trainings. I mean, we all skipped as kids. And yeah. I thought that looks easy. And it's not. No. <laughs> it's not. But anyways, um, yeah, posing is a lot harder than it looks. It, I noticed it. Oh, it's tiring. I mean, right now for me to even do five minutes, I am exhausted. Mm -hmm. And um, it's more of a workout than my training, which I can train for an hour and a half, 
five minutes of posing and I'm just, I'm a wreck after five minutes, but it's, essentially uh, what is posing just flexing your muscles and, and it is, it's flexing your muscles, but it's getting, getting to know your body. It's, uh -huh. um, it, you, when, when you look in the mirror, you, we just look as a casual, you know uh -huh. what I mean? This overall, right. But when you get into the posing and you start pulling that, that fat off and you start that water starts to come off and you have to know how to pose you have to know how to show your body because there again we're not as, as hard as we work to become symmetrical we aren't we are not symmetrical so you have to know how to show your your best parts right in that pose and um so what was your journey like when you were going to from start to finish on your posing journey I have, it has been a long journey because I'm not a great poser. <laughs> it's something that I've really had to work at. And um, the biggest thing, I'll never forget it, is getting to learn, and even for men, getting to learn how to get your lats out. It's not easy to puff them out. And uh, I'll never forget it. My first bodybuilding coach uh, showed me real fast how to get, because she literally just came out up behind me and pulled them out. And really? I have never forgotten that. And I've always been able to do it since. <laughs> oh. but it's knowing how to get them out and how to flex them properly. And uh, opposing, um, I literally lost a first place and went to third because of my posing. That's how wrong. important posing is, absolutely. What did you do wrong? Um, one of the bodybuilding I shows I did, one of the pro shows I did years, years ago, um, I placed third because of my posing was not good. And I learned after that, that you know how, you need to know how to pose properly. Yeah. So, and since then, I've been lucky enough to uh, hook myself up with Fidel Clark, mm -hmm. who is probably one of the best posers in the industry. And uh uh, he really puts you through it. You what, did he focus, what did he focus on with you when you first, uh, when you got under his, uh, under his guidance, under his um, guidance yeah. he, for him, it was trying to get me confident enough. You, I wasn't confident, um, in who I was at the time. Mm. Um, and he wanted to build that confidence up in me. And that for me, it became just seeing him regularly Right. You know what I mean? And, and going through the poses over and over and over again. And, and I did do that the one year uh, back in 2018 when I did the uh, Arnold's. Okay. Um, I saw Fidel three to four times a week and probably the best show I ever did uh -huh. uh, because I worked so hard with him for it. And I didn't have to think about it when I got on stage. It just become natural. And it was just a part of me. Wow. Um, yeah. So it was probably the best show I ever did. And I had so much fun doing it because I was more confident then. What's a show like, Robin? I've never, like for the people that never been to a, uh, a bodybuilding show, uh, what's it like from the, 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 the contestant standpoint? You know, like you get there, walk us through what it's like in a, in a show, in a bodybuilding show um oh wow it's an adrenaline it's such an adrenaline rush um even talking about it just gives me goose <laughs> you're, already, you're already jacked up you're ready it to does go. it does it's just, <laughs> yeah um it's crazy because you often go there the day before mm -hmm. um you have to do um your weigh-ins mm -hmm. um and you register and that's where you start meeting everybody and you see yeah. everybody and and um yeah it, it's it's so much fun the day before and then you're you know and then you're starting that night to do your carb up and and you know you're going through the night you don't sleep much so what is a carb up um so that's when you're you're so depleted um you know what robin talk about the depleting process up to the uh the carb oh. up because that's hell on earth for you know something I talk to so many people with aspirations for bodybuilding and the number one way, uh, the number one reason why they get, they turn themselves away is that right there, that yeah. last 30 days of being a bodybuilder. I mean, before yeah. pre-show. Yeah. It's um, well, the, the, 
Yeah, it's it's a hard process, and it's what's it like? It's I get. I mean, it's hard, absolutely. But in this, when you're down to your last month, you know you're down to the last four weeks. You've worked so hard for that. Yeah. And yes, you are dragging. You are literally dragging your butt. You are weak. Uh, you're tired. Um, you just want to get through it. So at this point, Robin, you're not eating any carbs or anything like that. Oh yes, you are. Absolutely. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. walk me through that. So you're, yeah. you are your eating carbs something. are low though, depending on what category you're in too. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many divisions. So depending, but I mean, at four weeks out, yes, you definitely still have carbs. Um, okay. Your carbs might lower uh, two weeks out. Okay. Um, to get you down to where you need to be. You know what uh -huh. I mean? If you're looking at a weight category or, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you just aren't where you need to be. Uh, right. They'll lower your carbs. And then the last week uh, coming into show, yes. uh, usually the two days prior to you, your coaches will start carving you up or, um, and that's where you, you start, to, you want that fullness now. Okay. And you, but you deplete water before that, do you? Um, some, some people do. do. So, yeah, some so people do. I've tried both. I've tried both uh, over the years. I've tried where you um, lower your waters throughout the week. So, as you uh, come into your last week, some people will already be at eight or nine liters a day. Okay. And so, then they'll, your coaches will start lowering your liters per day. Um, until you have none 24 hours prior to show. Uh, other way, another way that I like much better is yeah. um, my coaches will um, increase my water. Uh -huh. And I'm usually at 10 to 11 liters a day, uh, 24 hours prior to show. So okay. then I'm overloaded. Right. And then they start cutting my water. Um, about 24 hours prior, which is to me, it works much better for me. Okay. Um, I'm not dragging my butt. The other way I'm dragging and I'm just so tired. I can barely step on stage this way. I still have a lot of energy. I mean, I'm still able to feel great when I step on stage. It works just that much better for me. And you're still working out in that two, that last two weeks where you're like dying. You're still, you're still working out, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's not until if I step on stage on Saturday, my workouts don't stop until Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. My, I, but those, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're only doing very light full body workout other than your legs. Oh, okay. Uh, your legs stop the weekend, you, the weekend prior to show. So approximately a week before show, you no more legs. You don't need any, any reason for that. Um, you don't want water. You don't want to hold any water on your legs. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a while for it to come off. Right. So you don't want you don't want to tire those legs out. You'll get them inflamed mm. uh, inflammation on there and you don't want inflammation. You want to be able to show them nicely when you come out. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're just, you're just doing that little bit of pump um, mm -hmm. those last three days, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a little bit of pump. And then um, you're just, then you start carving up usually about the Thursday, like yeah. a nice slow carb up. And then uh, what do you guys, what do you eat for carb up? Um, it varies. They uh, make my coaches have a tendency just to keep me on my same, same foods. Okay. Uh, they seem to, they, it works well for me. Uh -huh. uh, they keep me on my right. They just increase my rice or they try. Cause usually by the, that point, uh, I'm not able to take in much more than that. I feel hungry, but I'm just not able to get a, a lot more in, but they sometimes will add, um, maybe a bit of almond butter, um, some more rice cakes, uh, -huh. uh that kind of thing. So, um, I have rice cakes throughout my whole um, all, um even in my off season and yeah. my prep i have to have rice cakes i have a very rare um disease in my mouth from being a bodybuilder for so many years okay so it uh i have to keep the rice cakes in um what's happened is uh, the lining in my mouth uh -huh. um because we have such soft foods our foods are so soft uh, right. bodybuilders right um, that it, my, my mouth feels like it doesn't need to protect itself anymore. 
if I constantly oh, wow. just eat soft food. So when I do add something in there, um, it, I get huge blood cankers in my mouth and to the point where I had one um, in my throat and it almost blocked my airway. So like what kind of foods would activate it? Um, anything like very crunchy. Um, oh, okay. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anything like that. So they just keep rice cakes in my my meal plan all the time. Just because that would be the only crunchy thing you yeah. could you yeah. just keep them. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So So yeah. you carve up. Now where are we in the show? You you're just uh getting ready. I usually the the first show is in the morning, right? Uh yeah. So you have your pre-judging in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um that's when you bring your best. Um mm. yeah, you bring your best to that show. Um all eyes are on on everybody in the morning show. The evening show is basically, once you come off the morning, you've done your work. You've yeah. done the hardest part. Uh, the evening is more for for show. It's for your, uh, if you have a routine to do. Um, and um, that's when the awards are given out. How many judges uh, look at you in the morning show? There's seven. Okay. There's seven altogether. So it's, uh, it's, do they score you out of 10 out of a hundred? It, it um, no, it, 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 um, it, it goes from like one to five and you've got a range from there. Uh-huh. Um, so they put you in, uh, like they usually do your top three for or your top. Now it's the top three and then they just go from there. So, right. yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, when all eyes are on you, it's, uh, it, it depending on how you, it can be stressful. Right. Um, I remember the first few times I did it, I was, I was nervous, <laughs> very nervous. Cause you know that it, um, they're looking at you that it's, it's, uh, you know, you've brought your everything and you know I mean? You're being judged, you're being critiqued for your body. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's now it's, that's all that I see when I step mm-hmm. out now is just the judges and you just give them a big smile and do your best and, and know that you worked hard for it. And is the, in the, in the back, in the back room with all the contestants, do you find any uh, intimidation? Oh uh, yeah. Any, how to explain <laughs> that. Talk, talk to me about that. The competitor intimidation, all the thing, the little things that go on, what happens back there? Oh, if, of course. I mean, it's, especially nowadays with the social media, I mean, I, you have a tendency to follow a lot of people that you come up against Oh God. and, oh yeah, it's, you know, um, who you're coming up against. And, uh, some of these people, man, they are good and yeah. they look fantastic. So when you're backstage and you, you know you're about to step on stage with these people, it's like, oh my, yeah, you're nervous. I always wanted to know about that because I remember watching Arnold back in the day, and they said Arnold always had them beat in the back in, in the in the back backstage. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's now I just have fun with it. It's mm-hmm. uh, I've been lucky enough uh over the years to meet some fantastic people and i come on stage with a lot of people that i know or i may even if i am just meeting them it's fun to meet them and it's fun to know that you're coming up against these people and and uh you just have fun with it and enjoy it so i haven't been to the pro part though um i hear it's um it's different than the amateurs yeah it's a little more uh cutthroat but (laughs) (laughs) It's, uh, um, we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, I'm still, still going to have fun with it because I'm, I know a lot of these women want to get to Olympia. That's what their ultimate goal is. Okay. Um, and what's the biggest show, Robin? The biggest show. Oh, definitely the Olympia. The Olympia. Okay. Definitely the Olympia. Absolutely. That's everybody steps on that stage to, to hit that Olympia stage. That's what their ultimate goal is. Where's that held? Um, well, it's uh, down in um, Las Las Vegas mm-hmm. right now, um, and it got moved. It's been moved a couple times. Uh, last year it was in F- Florida. I think it was in Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know you, uh, you. You got the opportunity to be a judge, and you're a judge. How did you get into that, and what was that like? Uh well, I've been lucky enough to meet great people. Mm-hmm. And um, 
I'm not into coaching. Right. I, I've tried it. Uh, and I did well at it, but it's just not my, it's just not my thing. Yeah. And, but I wanted to stay in the industry. I know one day I'm going to retire. Yeah. Um, I won't be stepping on stage again, but I still want to stay in the industry. So, mm -hmm. um, and I love, I don't know, it just comes naturally, I guess, sitting in the audience and, and critiquing mm -hmm. everybody as they come on stage. I just enjoy doing that. And I just, I guess I can, I can have a friend step on stage. Um, and if I know myself, if they didn't bring the package and somebody else did, I still got to score them the way that I feel that they need to be scored. I mean, you have to have, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. You're not partial. I am not, absolutely not. No. And that's, that's kind of what I want to bring to the judges table. Mm -hmm. is is that like I want people recognized for what they've brought what they've earned what they've worked so hard for mm -hmm. you know what I mean and uh there is a lot of um politics in this uh industry like every industry like every industry yeah but I mean I would like least to say that I can contribute and you know do you find a lot of that? I mean, you always hear bodybuilders saying, I came third and the other two were fat and blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> no. um, you do hear a lot of that, but you gotta, it's, it's, it's really hard because obviously the judges that are sitting down there see something else that the audience doesn't see. Yes. Right. So um, they're, not everybody in the audience knows how to pick certain things out. Right. Right. So obviously those judges um, overall, when you have all those judges sitting down there, obviously they see something that, that other people are not seeing. So they've put them in that position for a reason. No, for sure. You know? So, yeah. That's uh. so what's your plan now? What is your, your goal right now? What are you looking to do? And, um, for Robin Gray, um, the, the industry goes? As far as the industry goes, well, I mean, I would uh, still train and hard, uh, still looking to step on to that, do my pro debut next year. Um, I'm hoping to do it down in the States. I'd like to go back. I got my pro card at North Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to go back and do that one. I, um, I prefer to do uh, shows where I'm in more of my age category. So in the, the master's divisions. I want um, to ask you about the mat, the, like the categories for people that are getting up there. What categories are there? How old can you compete? And what stories have you seen as far as older, older, older competitors? Um, well, I mean, you can compete um, anything over 18. You can compete. So you have your open division. Mm -hmm. Um and they have junior divisions as well. Um, even in the fitness in the fitness uh, division, they have uh, juniors. Mm -hmm. I've seen like young young girls, uh, you know, six and seven years old getting up on stage. Really? Um, oh yeah, absolutely. And it's great to see. Fitness was huge. The fitness division was huge years ago when I first got into it. It kind of dwindled out for a bit. Uh, you'd still see one or two per show, but it's it's really come back up again. And now you're seeing these younger ones coming in. I didn't in. realize there's a kids division. Yeah, there is. There is. And it's fantastic to see them up there. Yeah. You have people so, in like their 70s and their 80s as well? Oh, yeah. It, it, it ranges. How's that division? Eight, yeah, six or seven right up until I've seen, I've seen a gentleman who was 75 step on wow. stage. Yeah. And talk about so motivational. You know what I mean? To have them still coming on. I know I have many people say to me, when are you going to give this up? You know what I mean? Like you're, you're getting up there in age and I'm like, I don't plan on it. You know what I mean? And it's, it's in my life. It's, it's part of who I am and uh, I enjoy it. So, I mean, as long as I keep wanting to step on stage, um, I will. How did, it, how did it change your life? I mean, you've talked about how so many ways it changed your life, but ultimately, if you can give like a word on what bodybuilding did for you, what would you say? Um, 
what it did for me. It, oh, that's, I could put so many words to it. <laughs> it's so many words. It's, it's, uh, it's a huge part of my life. It's, uh -huh. um, it's my de-stressor. It's my motivation. It's, it's, uh, it keeps me young. It, it yes. drives me to um, keep pushing myself. Uh, to better myself. I still, I mean, I'm 54 years old and I just did, um, I just hit goals that I just, um, before we went into lockdown, I just hit goals that I had never hit before as far as my weight training goes. And uh, I mean, at my age, it's, it's, that's hard to do. But I have great people around me that just keep pushing me and pushing me. And, and it feels fantastic when you hit those goals. You know what I mean? That, uh, oh, you yeah. Don't get, you don't get like injured during bodybuilding, do you? Oh, yeah. I, I've what, are, had, what are common injuries that you find from male and female bodybuilders if there's different injuries? Um, you hear a lot of complaints about knees, um, a lot of knee injuries. A lot of strain on the knees. Um, a lot Robin, do you have to go heavy to, to get size? No. Do you have you, to go heavy? No, you don't have to go okay. heavy. Okay. Um, I don't always go heavy. Mm -hmm. I, I range. Um, I have a tendency to go a little bit lighter, like, you know, medium weights. Um, I don't go crazy heavy. Once in a blue moon, I'll go crazy heavy or I'll build up to that heavy. It's more just to keep myself motivated. Right. And uh, to strive um, for. Because I'm assuming these, these knee injuries are coming from squats. Um, they come from squats, but it's, it's competitive too. Like you're just repetitive, constantly, you know, repetition. And um, I don't do leg squats. Press. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, the, my knees got really bad last mm. year. And um, so I went to physiotherapist and believe it or not, it I wasn't rolling. I wasn't stretching. And once I started rolling and stretching, I haven't had any problems with my knees since. Knock on wood. Thank was you. it the quads that you were rolling mostly or the hands? Yeah, my quads. Yeah, oh. they were just so tight that they were pulling on my knees. They were pulling on the tendons and the muscle in my knees. Wow. And they were causing pain. And once I started stretching and rolling that out, I've had no problems with them. Yeah. Yeah. What about so it, lower back? Um, I did have some issues, uh, where my back went out twice last year. And there again, it's not injuries. I hadn't been rolling or stretching properly. So okay. it, uh, was, uh, my glutes were so tight that it was pulling on my lower back and causing oh, my God. back to go out. Yeah. Your injuries are due to just strong muscles, just too strong, too strong. That's what they basically said. Um, now I have had injuries, um, I've had, I broke a hip and a pelvis and do that? running on the treadmill, mm. stress fractures. Um, and I broke both my feet from skipping. Um, it's just Jeez. constant repetition. You just, I just needed to you broke both the bones in both feet. Yeah. It's the same bone in both feet. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So it, uh, what was yeah, that recovery? It, like it was, <sighs> What happened with the second one? I didn't even know I had a broken bone. I was about six or seven weeks, um, still working, still training. Uh -huh. uh, the foot was a little tender. I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, oh, okay, well, I've strained something. And then when I went to the doctor, he told me that it was broken. So then I went into a uh, boot cast and uh, it was a long hard recovery because it ended up taking a year to recover because it once I was in the boot cast it caused other uh problems with my uh -huh. muscles um so everything started to tighten up and you probably took, couldn't do any cardio uh no no it's just, just straight strengthening yeah exactly mm -hmm. so I had to have a massage therapist and a stretch therapist uh work on me three times a week uh, in order to stretch things out properly so that I could get back to work. So yeah, it was quite the process. When were you able to uh, start either walking on the treadmill or doing basic stuff for cardio? Um, it didn't, once the cast was off, I think was about, it was a little bit longer. I think it was about 10 weeks, 10, 12 weeks it was on. 
And then I was slowly able to uh, get back into like a slow walk on the treadmill. Yeah. But you swimming as your as a as an option, swimming? Um, no, I don't. No, just basically like recumbent bike. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, I mean that kind of thing, but just a slow, basic slow walk. You don't see too many bodybuilders in the pool. Uh, no. It cuts too much. No. Yeah. <laughs> cuts so much. It cuts so much mass so fast. It, it does. It does. It's a. It, unfortunately, it's a great workout though. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just, uh, and it's not all that convenient for us either. So, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, we do have a tendency if we're not careful mm-hmm. um, to get injuries, unfortunately. Yeah. But, well, Robin, uh, listen, man, this was a great show. You've given my, our listeners a ton of information. Anybody that has been aspirations to go into bodybuilding, we've pretty much laid out a lot of areas they can consider. Yes. That's crazy. Um, do you have any last words for anybody that's thinking of going into the bodybuilding industry as a contestant? Oh, I, I love to see new people. Um, it's, it's probably my biggest motivation for myself is to see uh, new people coming into this. And uh, it's, it's great for us older ones that are in this. It's just, it, it's hard. It's so rewarding. Yeah. Um, you I always say nobody knows their body better than a bodybuilder. It is one way of knowing your body so well. And yeah. it's, it's not everybody can step on stage. Not everybody can do the diet, but if you can do those and you can step on that stage, it's such a rewarding experience. Um, It's the adrenaline is, is unreal and it's so worth it. It is so worth just stepping on that stage. Even if you only do it once, just do it. Just, just to try it. Just to try it. Just to try it. Just to (laughs) say that you've done it and now you know what it takes to get there because it's hard work to get there. Oh man. It's hard, but it's so rewarding and, and uh, it's a great experience. Oh man. Robin, thank you so much for the inspiration and the information. So um, I'm definitely going to have you on the show again. (laughs) <laughs> anytime, anytime. More in detail, but again, thank you so much uh, for my live. Yes. All right. Take care, iLive listeners and YouTube listeners. We'll catch you next week, same time, and uh, have a great weekend.